some uh, good news. We find out the gender of the baby tomorrow. Word. Oh, so, right. Oh, it's going to be exciting. Not Lil I Wendella? Mean, Lil Wendella? Nah. <laughs> Nelson Wendella. <laughs> 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 Yo. You're now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You are now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You are now tuned in. It's just a position podcast. Welcome to episode 46 of the Juxtaposition <laughs> Podcast, a.k.a. The Extraordinary Nobodies, a.k.a. The Starting Five, a.k.a. The Five Heartbeats, a.k.a. Four Hubbies and Impossible. I'm your host, Varsinio Hall. <laughs> we back, Starting Five, playoff game, like we ain't never left. We got right. CEs in the building. What's going on, brother? What's good in the hood? My fault. Uh, what did you call yourself? Uh, Zoli? Or was that Zoli today? Zoli. Okay. I got the Knicks gear on with the Spike Lee glasses. Okay, okay, I'll take that. We got my man Pulpit Poppy. Hold on, let me get let me get Pulpit Poppy right because we ain't been. Gotta make sure we <laughs> get him right. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? Ain't shit, man. I was I can't say ain't shit to you after I played the Hallelujah music. Know, my bad, hell man. point. Can hell we get a hell point? point. Rack them up. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, my make bad. A, make was, a pool ball sound. Rack them up. That was disrespectful. Hell that was point. disrespectful. Chef, what's going on in your neck of the woods, my man? Ooh, just cooling, man. Cooling. I see you had a uh, you had some uh, festivities this weekend. We ain't gotta get into it, but I see you had a good time. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, wife's, wife's birthday. You know, Gemini season was full of facts. We just yeah, to happy birthday, birthday to well, wifey, happy man. Happy birthday. Hey. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, yo. You look like you in love, man. I like to see it. Love to see it. Yeah. It ain't just talk, man. This, you see, see these pictures. This, this is happiness personified. Like, I love to see it, man. <laughs> I love to see it. The money man himself. Hold on. Let me get, let me get my man. Let me get my man. Money bag, yo. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Not much. Chilling, working, studying. Um, but some uh, good news. We find out the gender of the baby tomorrow. Word. Oh, so, right. Oh, right. Oh, hold on. Right. Let me throw an air horn for that. <laughs> you are the father. Top five, <laughs> better alive. Mm-hmm. The dubs. Yeah. The J dubs. I'll take that, though. That's, I'm hoping for that. Yeah. Well, now, not Lil mean, Wendella? Lil Wendella? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson Wendella. <laughs> 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 Yo, Yo but nah, hilarious. I told you I got I got I got a hundred on Seuss, man. I got a hundred on Seuss. Seuss. Okay. Hey Seuss. Hey Seuss is is about to come through, make himself make his presence known. You know what I mean? I mean hey Seuss, baby. <laughs> oh, I know. I just know it. That's, oh, that's big news, man. Yeah, Keep my so fingers crossed they, that all women hope. come your way. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds all kind of bad. It worked for Tariq. <laughs> y'all all like y'all all curse with uh beautiful daughters. The best curse yeah. ever. But yeah, yeah. what's the what's the uh what's the science behind that? I believe that, Kev. I believe that. Yeah, brother uh brother Poppy, uh you were the first uh to bless the the world with a daughter from this crew. Um what did you what did you do to deserve a daughter? Uh oh, is what man. I want to ask. Speaking of daughters, yeah. hey Ava. <laughs> What's up, Ava? What's up, sweetie? Hey. Ava, Ava making her debut. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about it. That's what happened. <laughs> Yo, man, honestly, my my sister had all boys, so I kind of wanted oh, a daughter. Okay. I wanted, to, yeah, I wanted a daughter because my sister had two boys at the time, and um, there were really on my, you know, in my immediate family, there were no female grandchildren. So, um, you know, when Amaya was uh we found out that it was a girl. I was I was really excited about it. Um, and plus, I've always treated women with the utmost respect. Absolutely. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm not fearful of the idea of having a daughter. I'm not I'm not like worried about none of that. You know, I, outside of like having to like scare the first date and let him know he got to see the Glock nine and all of that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> so you know, that's, light, that's, that's, part. that's light work. <laughs> <laughs> You got to just cut, come to the door with a tight shirt and then you see the imprint. Like, you just see the thing yeah, when it's hit. You don't even got to say yeah, nothing. Just, like, no, I ain't you got to You got to have on a dirty tank top. It has to be like <laughs> off white. Got to be yellow and I'm an arm. And you got to have a, uh, a stocking cap on. Not not the, not a do rag. 
the oh, stocking the day cap. Day, the day day. The day day. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm gonna have on a stock. I don't even got hair. I'm gonna have on a stocking. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, <laughs> for the aesthetic. Tommy, Tommy used to have on them joints of Martin, and he uh, had no. Yo, hair. can we have a can we have a whole episode on dudes that wear do rags that are bald? What's that, the purpose, yeah, bro? Why, there you know? is no purpose. It's, it's very disrespectful to us. <laughs> with no, laying laying down, down skin. Yeah. Although <laughs> laying down skin. Although preserving you your may thoughts. want to. You may want to wear it. Preserving your thoughts. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep mine in. Yo. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know if anyone heard that. <laughs> I didn't Shit. Can't, can't let these out. Can't let these slip out. You know? <laughs> keep, keep these for oh, myself. Shit. Cause you know Stop. Susan be hating in the meetings. <laughs> 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 Damn, that was hilarious. <laughs> oh man. Now what I was going to say is you might want to throw one on after you shave, just in case you nick yourself. And if your if your wife, especially if your significant other, is sensitive about their decorative pillows, it's a good look to like keep that protected. Make sure. Nah, just put it, just put a bandaid on that thing one time, man. Just put a, Make sure put you're a not leaking. Throw some, <laughs> yeah. throw some alcohol yeah. on that bad boy. I put a I put a WD forty. Nah, then aloe. Aloe, aloe gel. Yeah. Yeah, I put that tea okay. tree, man. I gotta get that tea tree, bro. That, yeah, tea, that tea tree, tree is so- God sent, bro. It yeah. does. It is great, but it stings a little bit. But it prevents, self care. Like, self care episode yeah. coming soon. Yeah, you just got to do a ah. <laughs> like the after shave. I can't you tell up. you that bevel I got, was good. Oh no, I don't got the bevel uh, shaver joint. I just got the the actual. You know what I mean? Razor. But I don't yeah, but you bevel. got all the uh, the cream, the the shaving cream, yeah. and the after shave, the pre shave. I do the pre shave, uh, the shaving cream. I don't, I don't use the aftershave though. I use something different. You know, James, a oh, name sure. brand product hoe. Like that was not name. Whole, I mean, great I, product. I, I, yeah, I, I, I got it because it was black owned, and I fell in love with it. Yeah, yeah. And Zo don't use it because it's black owned. Because you know how yeah, he exactly. feel about yeah, black owned business. No, so James put me <laughs> on it. Thank you, and I got one. Thank you. Then why you throw him under the bus? Because if you got nah, the same thing, got why you the do that? He went for the whole kit and caboodle. I ain't do all that. Like I just needed one. Zo said, I'm gonna take this crane. You can you can save the shaver. Right? How much is that? Be nah. Add to cart. I don't do that. Like the uh I got the 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 body wash, I have the deodorant, the lotion. Oh, you were oh my fault, Joe. Oh, my fault, Zo. Yeah, he, Thank you, you my fault. Thank my nah, like because if body I wash. again you got, you got the carpet too, James. <laughs> nah, if I'm gonna buy something though, and I because it's stuff I need, and if I could find a black owned company and I like I'm the products, it. I just keep buying it. But James, well, matter of we fact, can't, speaking black of, people don't just buy any lotion, bro. Like you know that that bevel lotion is good, bro. I'm telling you. Do it got cocoa butter in it? We'll say on the back. Or shea cocoa. butter. <laughs> or shea. Ain't no cocoa butter. butter. Or shea. That's the only. Ain't no cocoa butter. If it ain't, if it ain't from Benin or Ghana, I don't want it. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> uh, I got a lot of a lot of good stuff in there. I go get the bottle, see exactly what's in there. Well, I wanna, I wanna just, I wanted to, to index on your uh, black owned business. Uh, point because I, I like that hoodie you got going on brother I like this very very nice hoodie that you got yeah is that bro these joints are like legit i thank when you. you talking about quality i'm like ah you know he hyping up his own product i get it <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> Why he throw i get it <laughs> i understand though like you know what i'm mean? like how good could the sweater possibly be right i'm about like just wants one i gotta buy one for her okay. now. <laughs> but thank you um, i appreciate that so now nah, these joints are legit bro Thank you, brother. And you are a hard critic, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't. He's not saying that just to make me feel better because he don't care. Before we care. before we continue, I'm, I'm gonna loop back to hear how y'all weeks were, but I definitely want to let the listeners know this episode will be successful if we discuss the pressures of productivity. Are you busy for the sake of being busy? Do you feel pressure to share your progress with the world? Such thing as you know, I'm grinding all night on Instagram. Well, get the fuck off Instagram and get to work. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk more about that in a bit, but I want to hear how y'all weeks were. We just had a long weekend. If you do work a nine to five, if you don't, I'm sure you celebrated something barbecues or family get togethers how was y'all's extended weekends oh, i was terrible what you do didn't invite me to go anywhere hit him eyes like, i seen so having fun in, in burlington i seen up. him i seen Got him no i will pull out the text to james <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> Alejandro giving Zo all his flowers with him dancing it's like oh where james at that's crazy <laughs> Word i up. thought to myself where james was at and I figured that uh you know I hit, I hit up I hit up everybody that was over here. Everybody had plans and shit. I'm like, damn man. That's wild. Guess I'll just be home. 
you know what? Usually I wouldn't even believe that, but because he threw you under the bus with the bevel shit, I'm like, now, <laughs> I'm like, nah, it's believable. Tell was me. that you want to tell us about your plans that you didn't include James in? I actually did text James in the plans because the plans <laughs> all happened within the same day. So people called me that morning because remember, um, pre prior to us, the show, we were talking about the weather and it was raining Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right? It rained all three days. Mm -hmm. Well, Friday didn't start raining until like 2 o'clock, but it was cold. Sunday, it rained crazy. So Monday, we got like a little bit of um, little sunshine, a little sunlight. So okay, I sent me the text. Yo, what we doing? And then they was trying to pull up with me. We was gonna, my mom wasn't feeling well, so that kind of got nixed. And we just said, yo, let's pull it to Reggie's because... I was going to make niggas lawn chair it out, but my, I don't have a kitchen right now. It's under construction in the new crib. We was going to pull up there. Oh, okay. But it's, it's, it's dusty. You can't be heating nothing up right now. So, um, cause I'm changing the kitchen around. So I was like, let's mob the Reggie house. So we pretty much, you know, called him and say, yo, um, just clean up. We coming over. We, we bringing a party. <laughs> just <you."> clean up. <laughs> yeah. I said that. And then I got sent to shop right for this. They went to that. And then, Boom, so I had to text James because James had just text, sent the text like, yo, what's everybody doing? Told him where we was at. Said, Hold on, so what you say, what you say is happening to the uh, the kitchen? I'm restructuring, re remodeling the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> make sure that everybody heard that. <laughs> Got him. It's one of my, Got yeah, him. I want to make sure everybody was uh, aware of what was happening. And yes, it's not free. Yes, you're right about that. <laughs> So, but yeah, that, so don't let James fool you with these lies. Like, I'm just this <laughs> bad individual that don't invite people. Thank Bro, you. Oh, man. Nah, I, I was in the crib. I didn't do much. I didn't do anything was for it, that matter. Did you want to? Or you just, I mean, if the weather was I, bad, I then that makes sense. I did oh, okay. on Monday, but uh, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. It's valid. But you're also a little further from most things at this point, right? Yeah, till we move in, then they ain't got no excuses. Right, right. I had no excuse. <laughs> we gotta turn off the lights. I think I seen James Car. <laughs> Word <man>. up! Yeah. <laughs> but you know James Car float. Uh, it got that quiet hum. <laughs> yeah, no, this I don't know if Zoe touched. He got the same car now. I'm putting. You I, heard, I heard. I heard. I wasn't yeah. going to do that to him. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, let's not say the same. Oh, my God. <laughs> let's not. Hold say on, one more time. <laughs> House, new kitchen, new car. Mm. What? Can we not say wow. the same lies? This is same? crazy, son. I believe mine is older. Y'all know I do the vintage models. But let's oh, just, can we, add, can, we can we car. do you or do you not have a new Benz to yourself, Alonzo? <laughs> it might be under a lady's name. I don't know. Nah. <laughs> yes, Yo. I do have a new Benz. Living in America, mm -hmm. the, the wealth is wild. Yeah, I do exactly. have the wealth. I was, you know, I'm just glad I, I have mean, wealthy friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Come on, don't act like you didn't get all friends. that offering money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh, heard that laugh? Heard that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> ATM in your living room for, for tax free uh, Texas. Study? Yeah, exactly. tax free Texas. I'm oh, pay. I pay. I pay to have that Bible study. I pay Zoom every month. Fifteen hours. So keep the ball, Cleveland. How was how was your weekend? Uh, it was a mix of up and down. It was a mix of up and down. Just a lot going on this weekend. I actually got had my COVID shot right before the weekend. My second COVID shot. So mm -hmm. Friday, I was just like feeling like trash. Like I literally felt like I got trash. Like my body was sore, <laughs> had a fever. I was like, man, this is not cool. But it pretty much wore off by by Saturday morning. But some other okay. challenges, but for the most part, we just chilled, man. It was cold and rainy in the Northeast. Well, specifically wow. in Boston, it was really, really cold and rainy. So we didn't do much so, at all. I'm sorry about that, fellas. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't relate. <laughs> Chef, what's going on in your world? How, I know you, you alluded to how your weekend was a little, a little bit before, but uh, overall, how was your weekend? Not too bad. You know, just more relaxing. I got family flying in from out of town, so got a chance to explore Baltimore a little bit more. And um, although the, the weather wasn't as favorable on our side, we just been able to make the most of it, trying to find new things to do every day. Um, That's love. Yeah, I think the best thing, if you got people around, if it's raining or whatever, just kick it at the crib, watch movies, yeah. dr drink, eat food. Yeah. That's a vibe. Um, Baltimore is so actually interesting, though, to be honest. Like, it, interesting enough, Baltimore has, like, a lot of food 
Options. The foodie spot? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It could be that. Outside of just the harbor? Like everywhere? Yeah, outside of the harbor, if you can find, like, get into the city a little bit, you know, um, really, like, explore, especially the black-owned businesses, restaurants. Mm. One particular one I just opened up, we just went to. Good vibe, good energy. Like, their whole culture is trying to um, mingle the club and the restaurant business. But it's not a club. Mm. It's more like a restaurant that feels like, like you're in a club. So it's, it's a good vibe, though. Good energy. You know, good time. Yo, I seen like three people have been to that restaurant and they're all like in the DMV area. So I guess it does have a, a like a nice little reputation. I was like, why well, keep seeing people at this spot? Yeah. I know it was black owned though. That's dope. Yeah. For me, I got I got like a little small world story. I keep it real short. So I made friends with my neighbors downstairs. They're from Philly. They know somebody that I know out here. So it's really like weird. So they literally live downstairs. Cool, cool, cool. And uh, I was downstairs kicking it with, with the couple. Um, the wife had some friends that flew in and she was talking, they were talking about their, their HBCU experience. And I'm sitting here thinking, I know somebody from this HBCU. I asked them like, y'all know so-and-so? They're like, all of them at the same time. Yeah. And they looked at me like, how do you know her? I'm like, mm-hmm. I worked with her at Facebook. And it was like, oh, that's crazy. So she had me coming down. We barbecued on the, uh, you know, on the grill. Well, when I say we, I've supervised <laughs> meaning you waiting I, for the food to be done i ain't, i kept my man company like i ain't flipped not one burger i was making sure that like he was he i kept him company um but the the weekend was was dope it's really fire to have people in your building that you fuck with because i don't really fuck with neighbors and you have like common people that i would have never imagined that mm-hmm. we know some of the same folks so that was pretty dope where is my drops? Because he over here talking about he worked for Facebook. He need a damn money song. Or something. I work. See, that's the thing. <laughs> he, he's moved on to bigger and better things. Exactly. Right, and you ain't had McDonald's, <laughs> nigga. Like, what you saying? Look at him. He's saying nothing at all. Look at him. Drop a chin right there, there huh? for in his wealth. Uh-huh. Quiet. Over there. Oh, I was about to say, okay. Since Don't you control the board. Over here, right? <laughs> Since you control the board, you ain't going to drop your Thank you very load. much. I'm rich, guys. <laughs> hey, man, listen. Now you I'm put not. a battery in this back. No. <laughs> I, I actually thought I actually thought I was the broke joint. My bad. I, we can edit that shit out because I ain't nah, even you got it right. You got it right. Keep that, AJ. Right, I'll throw you an extra five. Nah, man. Cleveland, take, take, <laughs> man. take two. Yo, if, I hear, so if, I like, hear, if I hear on a play the following week, I thought I should five and two. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so that's that's what's up, man. I'm glad I'm glad I have wealthy friends, man. I think uh, mm-hmm. you know how wealthy being around and surrounded by surrounded by wealth is a good thing. One of the things I wanted to mention, like, so over the weekend, not to keep it, uh, I won't keep it here. I want to bring it bring it back to where we were, keep it light. But over the weekend, unfortunately, I lost my my grandfather, my mom's. Dad oh, passed man. away oh, wow. over the weekend. That. Thanks, thanks, brothers. I appreciate that. But one of the things that uh, he did with us all the time is in the summertime, he had mad land. He has mad land uh, in South Jersey. And one of the things that we would do in the summertime is we would like work on the land. Like that's like what we did with him uh, mm. in the summertime. So like he would come to the house at like the crack of dawn in the summer, <laughs> just tell us to put some clothes on, take us to get breakfast and we'd be working all day. And I thought he was doing that to keep us busy. Like he just wanted to keep us occupied. So we were, weren't getting into stuff we shouldn't have been getting into uh, during the summer. But at the end of every day, even though we didn't know we were building something, we were building something. So mm. like we might not know what it is on day one, day two, day three. But by the end of the week, like we like built a pond or we built a waterfall or we, we wax on, wax off vibes. Wall. Yeah. So it was like I thought he was just doing it to keep us busy, but he was actually doing it. Uh, to for us to be productive and it just made me think about today's topic which is a lot of times like I t- I've taken that into my adult life but what I've discovered is I feel like I always have to be doing something and sometimes I feel like I'm busy for the sake of being busy and mm. like have y'all ever struggled with that like have y'all ever struggled with the concept of being busy just to be busy versus like actually trying to be productive and getting things done like has, have y'all ever fallen into that trap I have my wife tells me I can't sit the half down. And I have that. <laughs> but what's the origin though? Like what's the what's the I, I'm interested to know the science behind this because I'm not like that. Like I know how to chill. You know what me I mean? Too. I think I have blocks of like hyper productivity and then I relax. I, I work better when I have things to do, but I, I'm interested so to, to know what's the science behind like 
you wanting to make sure that you're always doing something? I just feel like we always think of something to do. Not really wanting to, but there always mm. is something to do in our mind. Like It's like a OCD of complacency. Like, I'm just not... Something got to be done. Something There's be, always something to be yeah, improved. Like I li- even when I'm asleep, I'm, my mind is racing crazy on what I have to do the next day. Like, that's probably why I have sleeping issues, but... Um, I feel that though. Yeah, like I have, I think it's genetic. My mom is like that. And um, I kind of got that uh, bad gene, so to speak, because it's like weird. But would you um, pass it down if you had a choice? Would I? No. I, I mean, sort of, because to me, it's good and bad at the same It's like a double edged sword. James yeah, said that, that you're on the other side of it. Like, how do you prevent yourself from? the rat race of always being busy. We know James well, I mean, not chill. <laughs> Shut up, sir. I watch that nigga sleep through class. Like I um that's not true. That's, <laughs> don't put those lies out there. Like that. <laughs> hey nobody say you ain't graduate. You got the degree, brother. But I'm just two. saying man. yeah you got two nah, of them joint. It is what it is. Um no I can I know how to chill because like when I'm at work I'm at work, right? I'm productive. I do what I need to do. Um, I get things done, you know, stuff like, you know, when I'm at work. But once I leave work, I guess for my job right now, anyway, it allows me to leave work at work. And then Mm. I also don't have any other quote unquote responsibilities when I get home Mm. in a sense, right? I don't have children to take yet. But right now I don't have, or all this time, I don't have children to take care of. I don't have parents or, you know, ill parents that I need to always check in on or, you know what I mean? It's just my wife and I, like we're, like that's all it is. So when I come home, it's, we just relax, and we chill, and we don't have anything else to worry about. And I think my life, the way it's set up, allows me to do that. But when you live a life where you do have children that you need to pick them up from school, now you need to go here. You got to make sure you cook them dinner. You can't always mm. want to eat out. You got to do all these different things and then get them prepared for the next day because obviously they're not doing that themselves. And then you got to get yourself prepared for the next day. So it's always constantly something to uh, moving. But for me. It's just not like that right now, but I anticipate that's going to change relatively soon. I bet the house on it that I ain't got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. Not yeah. like I think I have, I can really relate to Zoe in like literally thinking about what needs to be done. Cause like I'm the type, I don't like to relax until a certain amount of things are done. Like I feel like I can't sit down. Like if there's dishes in the sink, I can't sit down. If it's uh, if the trash ain't taken out yet, I can't sit down. Like, I just want to get to a point because I know I have so much to do. I want to get to a point where there's enough done that I can just literally sit down and be down for the rest of the night or the rest of the right. day or whatever the case may be. So, like, it's that. And it's like, I I don't like laziness. And I never, like, wanted Same. to be seen as lazy. And because laziness turns me off so much, if I start to feel lazy, I'm like, nah, I got to do something about Your this. Your skin itch, right? Like, I've been yeah. lazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't like laziness. And I think it was like the household I was raised in. Of course, my grandfather, like I mentioned before, but like, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's a combination of those two things. Kev, where are you staying on, on either side? I mean, I, I want to define, like, you know, there is a big difference between being busy and being productive, Facts. Like, I feel like you can be busy all day and still feel like you're behind on accomplishing the things that you wanted to do. I, so, like, it's like, have you ever like spent hours cleaning your like room or your your email, and then you were just busy all day, but you haven't actually accomplished the things you really want to do for that particular day? Yep, of course. Yep, it's almost like sitting at your desk and then leaving your desk with work to do or work that transitions to tomorrow. It's like, oh, yeah. I've been here like in the work space, but there are things that are still due that I should have done today that's due to my, that I'm pushing to tomorrow. Yeah. I, I think like being productive is like moving the ball like a few inches closer to achieving a goal every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, as p- being productive, you might be doing like, like, so for example, like a productive person in my mind is they have, their calendar laid out and they actually accomplish the things that they wanted to accomplish that they control their calendar and not and the calendar didn't control them. Right. And I think, I think a busy person kind of is like the inverted version. And um, how do you set yourself apart is a question that I pose to us to kind of decipher and, 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 and kind of like navigate through. Um, yeah. You, you bring up an interesting point because 
So I'll ask you, what do you think the relationship is between productivity and organization? Because Kev brought a good point about you moving inches towards the goal, but can you accomplish being productive without being organized? Uh, sometimes. Like housework you can. I don't know how much you could do it in business because you usually – your results of productivity are based off of like you've organized it in a list or schedule mm-hmm. or some sort. That's how, but in the house, you could do like a whole bunch of different stuff and clean up multiple rooms at different times and you know, walk away from this and get back to that and then sit down and, we, and, uh, and look remodel how much, kitchens. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> right, and then yeah, look how much we got done, like you know what I mean. So, I look at it like that, but um. I agree. I, 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 my point I'm making is like when you look at those two scenarios, if you take those two scenarios and if it takes me 12 hours to finish that shore, but it took mm-hmm. you three hours to finish that shore, you were more productive and I was just being busy. You know what I mean? In I look three, at it like yeah, just yeah. the efficiency, calculating the efficiency as, an, as a gauge, essentially. Yeah. For me in this aspect, like, like I told you, I, I really, the way that I look at things are, I have like a mental to-do list whenever I'm embarking on a bigger goal, smaller goal, what have you. So I had those to-do lists. Now my to-do list is always more than I can accomplish. So Mm. if I knock out seven of the nine, I probably should have only allowed myself to do five anyway. So I had this hyper productivity in a small (laughs) span of time. Yes. So I probably should have only did five, but I put nine and I achieved seven. So that makes me feel like, all right, boom, I'm actually ahead, but I feel like I'm still chasing something. But for me, I don't think there's a pressure, but I think there's more of a like, I want to make sure I take care of these things because I don't want to deal with it later. And that's where the laziness comes in because I'll I'll go ahead and like, I'll have a, a full day, be done work at like seven, perhaps to look at the dishes, I'll bust them out. You know what I mean? And before I chill, but I just want to get rid of my to-do list, but it's not a lot of pressure, so to speak. It's just that I don't want to have to deal with it later. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, that's cool. That's real. I, I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm pretty much the same. Like I don't like having things to do later. Like in general, that's when I don't mm-hmm. feel productive. Like when I lay down and I go to sleep and it's still like eight things that I got to think about in the morning. Like I still got to get yeah. up and take the, you know what I mean? Whatever it is. Let's elevate the conversation specifically around people who are busy to be busy. Have you ever found mm-hmm. yourself being busy just to be busy in a space where you're just like, I have to do this. So let me just waste time. But you really don't accomplish much. I Maybe don't, not you I, today, I think, but like you previously. Nah, I, not even me previously. I think honestly, when it comes to like my doing stuff, I was always doing something that needed to be done. Like it, it, it always had some kind of benefit in one way or another. I think where I struggled was, is this the thing I'm supposed to be doing right now? Type of type of <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, I need to be doing this, but do I have to do it right now? Should there's something else take priority? But uh, right. Yeah. But bigger than that, bigger than that, let's get away from the micro and get macro. Right. You're talking about relationships careers, friendships, are you here to be here or or have you always found value in the things that you're doing at the moment you're doing them? For instance, looking back at a career aspect where you're like, I probably should be focused more on finding a career that I enjoy versus clocking in here every day just because I'm getting a check. Is that productive or is that just busy? Busy. Right. <clears throat> but you know, it also comes with like, insight and and i'm gonna say wisdom too but it's just knowing what the moment that you're in that you're that you're occupying being productive is like the core of every high level achiever and like in in any mm. industry say that game. again that was fire say that shit again fire. being productive is the core of every high level achiever in any industry that you occupy in any game mm. that you're in you know like whether you're like one of the the highest level uh in, in entertainer athlete what what mm-hmm. business owner entrepreneur like they all have mastered their way of managing their time and they became extremely productive and like the results and they got to be results driven and goal oriented you know and, mm-hmm. and and if you're working at a job right that you really don't see this your career there's still a lot of ways to be productive in that space you just have to know what you're trying to leave with and what you when what are you trying to take away from that opportunity and that experience right uh, i think that uh 
it, it has to do with insight and reflection and knowing what you really want from what you're doing. It doesn't have to look like your career. It doesn't have to look like the job. That, it doesn't have to look like your dream job to be productive. You know, you can mm-hmm. be very productive and it's something that you're passing time on. So it's just all mad by it perspective. Yeah, I, I like that because you hit on like, you know, results driven, measurable. That's usually the things that kind of, I think that may be a, a, a differentiating factor between being productive and being busy because like I want to I want to make this more light because I feel like we're getting heavy and it might be my fault. But so you mentioned that you sometimes you can't sit still. Right. And when you are in that space, what what do you do when you are filling that time with think? Let's say you, you, your shit's already knocked out. You, you, you are you have everything you need to do. Everything's checked off. What else is there to do? What are you filling your time with at that space? I mean, I have children, so I could always just like I'll go do something with them, um, be around the house. Fine. If I'm home, I'll figure something to do at the house. Maybe come up with a checklist. You know what I mean? If I really feel like yo, I can't sit still, then and I don't have nothing to do. Let's say the weather's bad or in the winter time. And it's really bad in the winter because it'd be cold, so you can't really go outside right. do nothing. I'll just like yo, let's find something to watch. Like right. I'll say you know, try to create something to do but it doesn't always have to be like maybe there's nothing productive to do outside of my house so then i'll look for something to do with the fan when it comes to being busy and having and 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 being productive how important is a team in that regard Uh, (laughs) oh i mean (laughs) i was gonna say that's a funny question because like when you consider the dynamic of uh, like a relationship, let's say you consider a relationship a team, right? You know, it's funny. Like when you have people who are kind of at opposite ends of the spectrum, mm-hmm. that's a that's a funny dynamic. Like not opposite, not even opposite. Like I think it's my just wife different. is just different. Yeah, like my wife is a lot better at like no, sit down, like chill you're doing too much and then i make her anxious like because i'm always mm. moving i'm always thinking of something to do and she was like why can't you just sit down you got to go take the car to the car wash right now i'm like yeah because right. i have the time right. to do it right now <laughs> right. like you know what i'm saying like so that whole dynamic becomes really really kind of funny when yeah. it's uh two people aren't alike yeah i, when- I think <laughs> the key to that is just it and, and to say that because i know we're on top of dynamics and, and having two different sides of the spectrum i feel like it's challenging, but the optimism of me is going to tell you if people can figure out the balance is the most beautiful thing in the world. Like it's yeah. like if you could just let go a little bit of yourself and trust the synergy of the other person, I, I think what can get created from the two dynamics is the most beautiful balanced thing in the world, you know, and I what does it take to figure it out? What does it take, for, Kev? What does it take for that to happen? Like, what does it take for you to recognize, in this relationship sense, what that person's strengths are versus yours? Because there may be aspects of you. Let's let's. I'm gonna give you a scenario. There may be a man in a relationship, a husband who feels like he wants to, to handle the money. When it all shakes out, your wife is way better at money and handling the money than you. But you are saying like, no, I wanna I wanna handle the money. How do you get out of your own way to just say like, yo, she way better at this than I am? I mean, you got to know yourself, you know, and then ultimately you have to have trust. Um, You have to be open-minded. I feel like people who are struggling with those dynamics are closed-minded and they think their way is the only way. Mm. And it's not the case. And I think, you know, different experiences breeds different results. So, you know, just being more in tune with the person that you trust to to, to be your partner. And if that's who you're going to be a partner, you have to trust the person's perspective because you ultimately chose them for a reason. Now, you may not like the journey and the path that they decide to choose, but that's their process. You know what I mean? And that's to tough choose. too. That's tough. It's, it's tough. I can speak for myself. I feel like it's tough trusting, maybe trusting a vision that you have a hand in with somebody else who might not be like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that it's part. funny because a, a lot the, when you meet the one, I honestly think when you meet the one, they have the qualities that you need. Like, I literally think right. that what exactly. they bring to the table are the qualities that you literally that you need. And that's yeah. how you can have like a successful Elevate. partnership. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Do you think it's ready made that way or that takes work? Oh, it definitely takes work because yeah. you might not like you might to your point. 
you might not like the fact that they have the qualities that you need and you might be stuck to the <laughs> right. way you do something. You know what I mean? And the way you do it is, uh, you know, not the optimal way of managing it, but it's, it's tough. You got to check that. Like you got to check your own ego. Like we talked about last week, you got to check your own and, pride. And James, you manage a team. So like, how do you measure productivity versus being busy? I measure it by the tasks that are set in the morning and whether or not they're accomplished uh, throughout the day. Unfortunately, you just have people who they pretend to be busy uh, by looking busy (laughs) and pretending to do work uh, versus actually doing much. So um, to be productive, you know, you have I I think you have to set specific uh, tasks or goals to accomplish um, and you have to accomplish those particular goals. That's why I know you were productive. I was just thinking about is is being productive equivalent uh, to being efficient. Would you correlate mm. the two? Yeah, I would. Um, oh, I would. I would for sure. I think I think efficient is is better than productive. Like I yeah. think it's bit it's busy, productive, efficient. Like if you operate with efficiency, you didn't find a way to work smarter, not harder. For sure. You can you can probably reverse engineer it, teach somebody else. Mm-hmm. Efficient right. is is mean. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the next level. Just to say that efficiency, but. Yeah, so that's why I was just thinking about that because I'm like, I think if you can be efficient, as you was mentioning, it's actually uh, better than being productive. But kind of devil's advocate, sometimes trying to be efficient is just a shortcut um, to trying (laughs) to accomplish your particular goals uh, in terms of being productive. And and, then at the end of the day, it might just end up you were just busy and didn't accomplish much (laughs) because you were focusing too much (laughs) on trying to be, quote unquote, efficient. Yeah, well, you know the what process. Bernie Mac said, "Black people go to work like I ain't come here to work." <laughs> Busy. But you, but, but to I ain't, I'm gonna point, tell you what they not going to do today. But to, but to James' point, I think I think the levels is gradually increasing in that way, right? I think it's mm-hmm. I think it's busy. And then once you figure out your schedule and time management skills, and you get organized, then you become productive, and then you have to master the productivity. If we can move into the next level of becoming more efficient, I, I don't right. think you can skip steps in, in those tiers. I think you have to kind of really follow it in, in that kind of order to make it successful. Efficiency, successful. efficiency is tough. Like that requires processes. You know what I mean? Like you have to optimize other people to automate okay. certain things. Like you have to have a sweet science of monitoring how that person is moving or this process is moving without trying to be overbearing. When it comes to like business operations, efficiency is tough. And you have to truly understand, you know, I guess that's part of being productive, right? Understanding what your your role and responsibility is and, and your particular uh, subject matter. Because if you don't understand completely uh, from end to end uh, what's going on, you can't really be productive and you can't move into being efficient either. Right. right? So I think sometimes um, this is just kind of bring things a little full circle in terms of the steps. Uh, it's important to kind of quote unquote be busy, right? Being busy mm-hmm. when you're starting out is about understanding everything that goes on within the task that needs to be completed, mm-hmm. right? And you may not be the most productive at that point in time or that stage, uh, but once you really understand everything that's involved with that particular task, job, relationship, right. uh, and this goes on for anything, I think you can be more productive um, and grow within that uh task i keep saying task but i think it could correlate to to whatever you want and is it like being there, a uh, like a like a master what is it a jack of all trades and a master of none like that what busy could I, be is like, i i i, I want to d- divulge that statement because i feel like i am a master i am a jack of all trades mm-hmm. and a master of public health but besides the point like <laughs> like hold on give my man an air horn for that talk <laughs> You know, I, I think you really need to know what you do well. And right. and, and it's okay not because, you know, I, I'm going to be one of those people who don't want to be categorized, don't want to be boxed in, and don't want to be labeled. And so I, I can speak on that a little bit because it's just like, how do you be that versatile individual, mm-hmm. but kind of have a core per, a, a thing that you kind of center yourself around? I, I think you just kind of can't, you can challenge yourself, you can be challenged, you can want to stretch, you can want to do different things, but you ultimately have to come back into your why and what, what right, is your ultimately right. like, you know, purpose thing. And 
and, and kind of navigate different spaces with that. I, I think there's an opportunity to do that. You know, like I think there's a place to do that. You can be competent at something like meaning like you just have the ability to do it. Right. And you can be proficient at something, meaning I do it somewhat better than how most people do it. And then you can be great at something. So like you can I feel like everybody has things that falls into those buckets. But the I think the really goal is to focus most of your time on the things that you're great at. Right. And don't waste time on don't waste time on the things that you're just competent at and the things you're proficient at. That's kind of like that's where you're the jack, the jack versus the that's master. That's interesting. That's interesting master. because I look at like, I look at business models all the time and I look at like, this is not going to relate to anything that we're speaking about on, on the surface, but like I look at makeup artists, right? Makeup artists on this face is a makeup artist. They, you know, no they pun intended. Ma- shut up. They just apply makeup to women who need it for special occasions. Or men. Or men. Good. Thank you, Kevin. Like Inclusive. Inclusiveness. Like A-Rod. Right, no, like Sammy no. Sosa, maybe like Sammy Sosa. So that ain't when you go, from, go ahead. <laughs> when you go from when when you look at a makeup artist on his face, just like all right, they just they make it work at Max or four or what have you. But when you elevate that, you're like, okay, so they're not only a makeup artist; they're you can take the makeup part of they're an artist, right? Mm. All right, so you go one step beyond that. It's like all right, so you what you do is art. Then you flip that to a business aspect and you're like, all right, how can I scale being a makeup artist? You teach, you develop a course and now you develop a course and the course is teaching people how to do the thing that you do as well as you've done it. So you went from being a jack of, you're a master of one trade and then you're like, let me venture out and stretch. You know what I mean? I consider myself an artist you rebrand then you rebrand again and now you are stretching yourself to teach people what you do well try to get them to be as as good as you are so i feel like you can and probably should focus on the things that are close in close proximity to what you're great at to extend to scale because you really can't scale in my opinion effectively if you're a master or if you're a, a master of one trade so to speak mm. I can see it that way. I could also see it. I could also see it as uh, you you gotten down to the core of what you are. Right. So mm-hmm. if you say I'm a communicator. Right. Yes. And then you're a master communicator. You are an excellent program manager. You are a, a good this, a competent mm-hmm. this. But like what it all boils down to, everything else is an extension of your communication skills. Right. Right. So right. At, at your core, you're a master communicator. So everything else is okay. just a, a fringe benefit of what okay. you are at your core. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the like yeah. I think you have to be aware. Okay. Speaking of, speaking of what Kev was saying, I'm not one to like be put in the box either. And I try mm-hmm. to whenever I feel like I'm in one, I try to defy that uh, almost immediately. It's like a mm-hmm. reaction, like no, like nah, that's not me. But I think for me to increase those branches, I want to know more about what's in close proximity to my gift mm-hmm. and see what. What else is there? Like, how can I take this gift, extend it there? But I guess you're right. It all boils down to what I feel like my purpose is. Right. And I think the more you function in that, the, that's when you get true productivity, though, right? Like, when yep. you boil that down to, like, okay, I'm an artist or I'm a communicator or I, whatever it is, like, that's when you start to see the results a lot faster. Mm-hmm. Like when, you're yeah. on, when you work on the things that you're, that you're a master of and you focus on that, I think the other results come less busy, more productive. So we spoke about, uh, well, James spoke specifically about what it means defining productivity versus busy. But we also see the people who, you know, they want to document the progress. They want you to see every step of the way. They want, you know what I mean? Uh, Sleep is for suckers, you know what I mean? And there's performative productivity, so to speak. So where do y'all stand on sharing? Kev, I know your answer already. Where do y'all stand on sharing <laughs> your progress in relation to the goal you're trying to accomplish? Man, talk is cheap. <laughs> it <definitely> is. <laughs> the fuck you sharing for? You ain't do shit yet. Finish your job, man. The job's not finished yet. Do it. Yeah, keep, your, it and keep your hard hat on. Because we yo, because yeah. it gets praised. People praise busyness. Like mm-hmm. if you t- if you talk to somebody, like how you doing, man? I, I'm busy, bro. 
Like I'm just busy all the time. <laughs> even, like even by the end tone, of the conversation, even in your tone yeah. is happy. I'm happy to be busy. Like <laughs> exactly, but by the end of the conversation, busy, you could walk away without even knowing exactly what what they, the hell they doing. Yeah, like, exactly. Doing like, well, what what was he doing? He might have been freaking buying groceries and picking up his dry cleaning, and right. he making it seem like he got so much important business going on. But like, people praise busyness. Like that's why people post the cousin to death. And I'm like, nah, but if you don't sleep, you will be dead pretty soon. So <laughs> you might want to just get shit done the right way and take a nap. Like, you got, like you got some bags under your eyes, my man. So I'm going to need you to get some sleep because yeah, it's going exactly. down. Yeah. But what do y'all stand on it? Like, how do y'all feel about it? And have you ever found yourself in a space where you share too much before the job was done? Yeah. And sometimes I've <laughs> yeah. been there and sometimes the job doesn't get done because you, you, mm. you do, you kind of put your, my, myself, I'm going to say you put myself in a, what's, what's that when you're like paralyzed type space. Right. I feel like sometimes when, you know, in my past, when I would just kind of like talk about each step and highlight each step or talk about something that I really want to do, it, I, I lose the motivation to actually do it. It's mm. like it's weird. It's like uh, oh, it's uh, like the serotonin, the se- like the you got the satisfaction of by accomplishing telling. it by telling it to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like possibly. check. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing is, I think ultimately you 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 get energized by telling people what you yep. do, right? Yep. Yeah. So when you when you prematurely do that, the action just gets left behind. Mm-hmm. You ready? You ready to care of what you really want to take care of, which is telling somebody that you know you you want to do whatever it is that you really want to do. So that's just me personally, and I, I just think you find balance. I think it's important to share short, short wins with, with with people that that are you know that care more importantly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think it's also important because I think I, I internalize my energy when I don't share it. It forces me to really want to get it done so I can have mm, something to talk about. Yeah, you know? so I, I like I, that. I, yep. I, I kind of use it that way. Personally. That's a I fire agree. perspective. I, I, Go ahead, I agree with that part. I'm, it's weird because I want to tell my, like, I like telling y'all stuff because it motivates me. Like, if y'all be like, all right, cool, then I go, like, I right, bet I'm let me go shoot 10 more shots. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like that. Because once you but, open your mouth, you're being held accountable low key. Yeah, and I'm cool with exactly. that. But I'm also mm-hmm. superstitious. I feel like sometimes like <laughs> saying it just fucked it up. Like, yo, just like, yep. like mm-hmm. I don't even- To the wrong person. To yeah, the wrong person. Not, yeah, I guess I, I just, I don't want to- um, If it goes down, if it don't go your way, you have something you're like, damn, I should have told him. I should have kept it to myself. Yeah, like I feel like there's like the little, I mean, if Cleveland was saying that, he would say the devil's working overtime, right? Like, <laughs> so like, <laughs> like, it's like sprinkling the bad <laughs> juju on it or something. I don't know, I don't know why that made me laugh twice, but it's like, because <laughs> Cleveland, of I'm all just people. Saying, like, I'm trying to give the worldly view of it. Like, <laughs> I, I don't want to say universe because I feel like universe is an excuse for people not wanting to say God or something like that. But yeah, that's a fact. Sometimes, sometimes. like, you don't want to blame God for that. Like, yo, why? So you just say, okay, the devil did it. But sometimes I just feel like whatever it is, the higher power, when you say it, it's like, I feel like sometimes... Maybe it's just me, like how Kev said, with just him. With me, it's right. like, nigga, who told you to say that already? Nah, mm. it ain't happening. Mm. Nobody told you to jump the gun on that. Like, yeah, damn. I feel that. I feel that, bro. I've been there. <laughs> and, I, and I'd be like so mad at myself. Like, damn it. I knew yeah. better. <laughs> Word. You know but now nah, it's important. I think I think um, in, in saying all of that, just knowing what makes works for you. And I think everyone's going to be different. And it could be superstitious. But... If it works for you, then it works for you. If it don't, then no. Yeah, but Kev, after you hit the nail on the head, we talked about the, that performative aspect. You get that you get that hit of of accomplishment when you tell somebody like, "Yeah, I'm about to I'm about to move to so and so." I remember when Zoe thought I was bluffing when I said I was moving to California. He was like, "Yeah, uh huh, true, right, right." That's what's, <laughs> that's what's up. That's yeah, what's that's like, true. nah, nigga, I'm I'm really leaving, but. To me, it was a done deal in my mind. I had locked it in already, right? But trying to describe it to people where it don't make sense, it's like, all right, cool. It sounds good. Sounds nice. But that's the difference. Um, yeah, I think somebody's when you never want to be a, a, uh, an about to, an about head to. Headass. Like, yeah, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't uh, stand that. Yo, I'm about, to, I'm about to do this. I'm about to do that. Like, all right, tell me when you do something. Anything right, you do. 
Right. Just don't don't ever tell me what you're about to do. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said that to my wife the, I like a couple you. years ago. I was in, I was referencing someone that we know, and um, I was like, cause she told me some story like, oh yeah, such as I say he about to. I'm like, yo, this like the fifth time niggas say he about mm. to do something. Like, I'm like, yo, <laughs> do you not see that? Like, there's a pattern here. I don't know what's worse though, because me, well, me being the position I'm in, like. With my the position, well, that too, yeah. With the company, <laughs> I was stood out to me when we were working together, like when Cleveland and I were working together. A lot of those guys always was, if not, if they weren't, a, I'm about to, they were, a, yo, I used to have, I used to something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how you used, I to, used to be a used this, to, but you're yeah. here, like, I know stuff happens, you can't dictate, you know, where life happens, but it's like. I don't know, you I just feel like I don't even I don't want to be one of those, you know. Like I, I mean it's inevitable if something happens, but I just try too hard not to like, I don't know. I'll rob a bank before I do nah do man. One of my mantras is like, you know, with God's grace, my mantra is don't like don't let life happen to you, happen to it. So if I have it in my I, I'm on the other side. I I typically probably don't share a lot of my wins, and I probably should like there's things that I have accomplished and am accomplishing currently that I don't tell. I tell, I tell Tiff, and that's kind of it. And I probably should share it more widely, but I just don't for whatever reason. I just feel like this is the the curse of like being productive. It's like I think there's always more. I'll share the next one. I'll share yeah. the next one. Yeah. I'll share the next mm-hmm. one. Yo, can can I can we dig deeper into that into that phrase? Because I hear that a lot, and I'm Which just one? thinking about the person who hears like, "Don't let life happen to you, happen to it." Like, yeah. How how do you do that? Like, how do you how oh, do you not let life happen I can, to you? And how do you? Have I can, you? because you you are you are in control of your set of circumstances. You can't control what happens to you, but when life happens to you, right? Mm-hmm. When you can't control it, you have a set of options. You can probably complain. You can get busy. You can soak. And when and when life does happen to you, you still have the option to happen to it. All right, it's at my front door. What am I going to do now? But in those spaces where you're not being impacted by anything traumatic, go hard. Like, you know, like I was talking to Tiff about a job, a job application or applying for a job or whatever. There's certain parts of that process you can't control. What you can control is how much you kick ass in the, in the interview process and if they don't want you fuck it they didn't i didn't want them <laughs> you know what i mean like I, that, that space wasn't for me i didn't need to be there but mm-hmm. when you get the opportunity to do so you kill so i just i think i think it's a matter of you are in control of your set of circumstances whatever is being presented to you you can complain about anything but mm-hmm. what you do with the things that you are given is always up to you yo yeah. and the reason reason i wanted you to dig deeper in that it, it, dig, let me not say that because y'all are immature. You going? It's Alonzo. <laughs> the reason why I, I wanted ride, you to elaborate ride. more on that, more on that, is because I think it relates to it relates a lot to what Alonzo was saying when he said, uh, like he doesn't like to let certain details out because he feels like things start working against him or working mm-hmm. against it, in in order for it not to happen. But that's the thing. Like I think you're always in control of your circumstances. Like a lot of people take things out of turn like um y'all know the story of joseph in the bible where they, he shared his dream and then his brothers like sold him into slavery yeah joseph he joseph he used to stuff. work at the diner shut yeah, yo up, <laughs> how do you remember this stuff i, I remember <laughs> them too i remember now that he said it but like <laughs> joseph my man's uh, name joseph, was joseph. joseph 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 i don't know you know my mind's a little different but go ahead i ain't mean to mess nah, up the word but like but like he a lot of people uh when they tell that story they say well he shared his dream and that's why he was sold into slavery and that's why he went through what he went through but his dream ultimately happened and the reason that it happened is because he kept working like he kept mm. doing the things that he knew how to do and it eventually brought him to the place where he should be so mm. it was like life happened to him but he still happened to life like he kept right. functioning oh. in the things that he was good at so that's like why it's that. like, don't be afraid to share. Like, you don't have to be afraid to share if you're legitimately sharing because you're excited about something. Mm-hmm. But don't let your sharing yeah. be the only uh, reward you receive sure. Facts. and not the end goal. Yeah. So I, I just think it's important to give people that, that practical, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's true. Here's what you do. I like that, man. I like that, that you guys frame it that way because especially you hear life is how you frame it. Like when things happen mm-hmm. to you, it's how you perceive it and, and, mm-hmm. and how you work around it. So that was good that you guys touched on that because 
you know, uh, even for somebody like me who have hesitancy sharing information until it actually happens, like I can say that, you know, hearing what you guys just said is like, well, even if I share it, even if I felt like I shouldn't have shared it, it's twofold, right? It's either I actually work my tail off until it happens and make it happen. But then if I prematurely talk about it, then I got to go twice as hard now to make sure that yep. I'm still yep. in my lane and in my movement of pursuing whatever it is I'm trying to pursue. So I, I, I like that you guys framed it in that perspective. I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's like it's literally limiting the limiting your outs. Like, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, you got to operate like you full count. You know, what I mean, you three balls and two strikes in at all times. You get one more swing, you better knock this motherfucker out the park. You know, because because opportunities don't present themselves all the time. It's a matter of like, all right, this is my only opportunity. What am I going to do with it? And that goes back to being productive, being busy, being efficient. You learn each step of the way how to be better at the thing. So when the opportunity presents itself, you you won't miss. Definitely. In, in that um, thing, right? When you said that, just quickly, be productive. I mean, I mean, because like the thing is about being busy. I think when people have end goals, they're trying to achieve their end goal. And and they feel as though if I'm just busy, if I if I you mm -hmm. call me and I say, Hey man, you free today, and I just tell you that I got 30 things to do, but they don't really help me advance to my end goal. And I'm just being busy at that time. I think that like people have to kind of reflect on what it is that they're trying to achieve. So mm -hmm. I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like using your end goal as a compass to be either productive yep. or being busy. Now, if you're not yep. achieving it day by day to get too closer to that, then you're just not being productive. You're just being busy. But if you feel like, you know, it, you're getting there slowly but surely, then you are being productive. You know, I, I think that's kind of something to say about that. Yeah. And I think something else you touched on about routine, like I think that a, a really clear difference between being busy and being productive is if you are, if you do have, let's say that you are your business productive, right? You got a business to run, but you got to run errands still. So maybe the person that called you. A productive person will return the phone calls on their way to being to continue to being productive. A busy person will not respond, won't answer the phone on the way to being busy because they're thinking they're like, ah, I got this time blocked off. It's like, no, you have you can work in efficiency by like killing two birds with one stone. I'm on my way to knock out one goal. Let me call you back because maybe you got some business for me or you got something that's going to make my day better. Like you got to be open minded enough to. Invite Flexible. those things in. That's why right. I call y'all every time I'm in the car. Because <laughs> I know wherever the hell I'm getting, I'm stuck for a minute. Like, Which is, it's a, it's a true thing. It's a true thing. All right. I want to play a little game. I don't know if this fits. But whenever I think about productivity as well, I don't know why the word clutch. Produ productivity, pressure, and being clutch, right? Mm. When, when you think of, and, and that's why I asked the team question earlier around like how important is a team to make sure that you accomplish these goals. I want to ask y'all one question. If we had to get one thing done for the pod or for life, who y'all going to? Who's your, who's, who's your Dame Lillard? Everybody can pick one. Who's your Dame Lillard? For the pod yeah. or for life? No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, let me erase that. Not for the pod. For like, you need something done. You need something done. Who you going to? It depends on what it is, though. Define it. You can define it. Whatever that thing, whatever a thing is that you like, nah, I need this, I need this done. I'm gonna call so and so. I'm I'm gonna name, I'm gonna name, I'm gonna name two things. Of course you are on the table. <laughs> I wanna leave something on the table for anybody else. If I literally like need something done, whatever it is, I need somebody to be picked up, I need to be picked up, yada yada yada. I'm calling Zo. Cause I feel like he's gonna make it happen. Like either he's gonna send somebody to pick me up, he's gonna come pick me up. Mm -hmm. uh, or send me an Uber and just let me know I'm he gonna need that bread back, like whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna let you know that. that. <laughs> you gonna let me know. <laughs> but like that was that was seventeen twenty seven. Listen, man, but focus on the goal. You get to where you gotta go. <laughs> Worry about that later. Hey, listen, I gave you that. If if I honestly, if I need like to talk and I'm like, I I need to call somebody. I know it's gonna pick up the phone. That's bar. Like one hundred percent. I feel like mm -hmm. be like I feel like my phone's about to ring. He just be ready to answer the <laughs> phone. You having that ESP? Like, well, first of all, I love conversation, so like I'm always about it. <laughs> Who going next? James, you go next. It's a hard question for me, um, because I never call on 
I have an issue with that, as we talked about before. Might play lean on me for James, so he know he could do that. <laughs> you just call. Oh, you got you got two degrees. You can solve difficult problems. <laughs> he did it by yeah, himself. Yeah, but the issue is, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, my wife is 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 someone that I can call and and ask to do anything that's that's you know extremely important. James cheated. Um. Yeah, he did cheat. That's but, usually that's usually your job. But. <laughs> Besides that, I mean, honestly, it's just it's just hard to answer the question because I, I really do try to accomplish things always on my own, which is terrible, which I, you know, admit it's before. only terrible <laughs> when you have a support system ready to mobilize. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Like if like but if you I, didn't, but, I, but I believe I do have that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you do. You he do. Yeah, like, I just don't like to press that button. Yeah. yeah. And that's, like, that's that's the thing. Like when it get like if if I if if I'm calling and asking for like for help for it something. Dies, dire it's straits. like yeah it's it's crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yo, like yo kev i'm in the ocean right now i probably should have called you earlier yeah but <laughs> <laughs> i figured i could have got out of it <laughs> yo, james yo. is it is, is that like a completely you thing or do you like worry about the response like do you worry about like no i just a me one thing. of us it's just you no thing. it's just a me it's thing i just I just always want to get it done myself. Like I want to figure it out always, regardless of what the situation is. Let me try to figure this out. Mm. Um, and, it, and it just worked out so far. Mm-hmm. For me, it's an inconvenience thing. I, I don't want to inconvenience. Yeah, that's a good people. one. And when I ask for a favor, and and I hear an inconveniencing tone, I'm quickly to say, <laughs> "Don't worry about it." <laughs> Like, I will drop it. I will drop nah, it. No, I'm fine. I'm, it. fine. Like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm <laughs> fine. You know, don't sweat it. But it's for me, it's more of an inconvenience thing. You know, you got to, yo, James and Kate, y'all got to give us one person, though. Cleveland, Mr. Mr. Wife. No, uh, here. It's supposed to be on the pie. It's supposed to be on the pie. On the pie? Are we talking about? To that yes. And start doing that. Oh, <laughs> oh I thought, yes. you, I didn't know you meant. I, I didn't, I ain't, I, one okay, of us. My I didn't, yes. I didn't get that. Um, That's why I said you cheated. <laughs> Got you. I didn't get that. My fault. I just thought you meant anyone. Then again, it's still it's still relative though. Like it, it depends on proximity. Um, because mm, okay, obviously, proximity like, is good. Yeah, like Zoe is right here, so he's gonna be the person I'm gonna call because he's right here. Good yeah. thing he got two cars. Right, <laughs> three, three. But you know, I ain't gonna, <laughs> oh, who's, who's counting? <laughs> I was about to say, drop that two. <laughs> you, you left one out. Well. <laughs> Look, sips. <laughs> All right, so you go. I mean, Who you calling? So that's kind of really what it is. Um, I would say let's go back to proximity thing, right? I don't want to say proximity because it's we don't live near each other, right? Mm-hmm. So like, I I think it depends on the like the situation. To be honest with you, like, I would say to talk me off a ledge, probably you and Cleveland. Like, I might call y'all on three way. <laughs> like, cause it's if, if I don't my call one, like you, you can look at my call like, like if I call one of y'all, y'all don't pick up. I call the next one. Like, <laughs> one of y'all niggas gonna pick up? Or you, how many times have we been? I'm like, hold on, I'm gonna merge the call. Yeah, like, yeah. Because that means one of y'all's calling me back from the missed call. Right. So I would say, like something like that. Um, I mean, I've called, like I said, in proximity. James is always. I've always called James. Like, yo, pull up. Or like I'm coming. Matter of fact, don't even do that. I'm coming to get you. Like mm-hmm. you're going somewhere. Like we're going to do something. Which we, car you she, drove? Um, this, <laughs> this one I had the, uh, the old Murano. So <laughs> yes. we, uh, we four can't cars take the good cars there because what if I need to run somebody over? Like you just, just okay. Like, <laughs> right. Put your seatbelt on, James. You might have to ride, <laughs> run over a nigga. Like. <laughs> So, I, mean, I mean, proximity. Proximity is good. That that makes a difference. It's kind of a hard question because all of us are not near each other. With mm-hmm. And that's the thing. You kind of define it based on who, wh- however you you want it to be. Like, yeah. I utilize each and every one of y'all, yeah. and and I have in certain spaces. Like, if I need an you know, if I need to validate the, the the thought that I'm having, that's like, who else gonna really? I'm calling Kev. Like, yeah, that, he he makes me feel like I'm not nuts. Mm-hmm. Like, like, nah. Okay, I'm not tripping. But if you need a sound, if it's also Zoe is going to give me like the nah, you tripping. You like, you go ahead with the nut shit. Yes, Let's yes, go. you you are, <laughs> you are. Matter and fact, I feel I'll like for you, call him. I'll do it. <laughs> no, that you you've done that too. <laughs> I've definitely done that. But when it comes to like 
voices of reason. Uh, I, I split between James and Cleveland because James is uh, James is with the shits enough that he'll entertain it, but mm-hmm. he'll he'll make you he'll bring you back home. And Cleveland, you don't bring you don't call Cleveland if you are, if you have anything spicy going on. You just want to make sure <laughs> that <laughs> you know, hold on, time yeah. out, time out. Like the, the, the Cleveland that yeah. I knew, we're gonna talk about roommate Cleveland. Cleveland, I knew definitely drove me before I had a car when I had the hoopty. Like, yo, we gotta pull Listen. up with somebody. And Cleveland definitely don't get it twisted. Pass well, nah, Jermaine. No, no, no. Jermaine, Jermaine, get down. <laughs> Cleveland, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm about to say, yeah. Jermaine, Jermaine be ready, yo. Like, right. I didn't see I didn't see him take the hat off one time or two. And uh um, oh, man. I ain't yeah. gonna talk about your infamous mush, Cleveland. I'm gonna let it go. Uh, <laughs> I was defending myself. <laughs> it's what they always say. It's what they always say. Um, yeah, that's it for us on this topic, man. We're going to get over to my man, uh, Money Bag Yoda, deliver some bag talk. We handle bag talk in a minute. Hello. Yeah, since everybody rich. Wow, I thought we was about to play some intro uh, music or something for me. I was waiting. But you know what? Too. It's cool, uh, though. Don't worry about it. Here, take I'll this. I'll just jump in. <laughs> I thought what happened to the um uh, uh I thought we had the uh, I ain't getting no rap for me OJ's and nothing like that. The, yeah, That's what happened cool. to the na 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 do I have that? Yeah, there we go. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so bag talk. We're just gonna get into a little bit of the of the frenzy that that's kicking back up. Uh, with uh, this AMC stock and this mm. GameStop stock. So I just want to put it out there that I'm upset that I sold my AMC <laughs> stock. Um, and that thing is definitely jumping right now. Uh, but but more importantly, and, and more specifically, it's just more about uh, today about strategy and, and, and investing strategies and understanding what's important to your specific goals and your specific life. So we, we can talk about the frenzy and be excited about that. Uh, but that is more of a, a day-to-day trade activity. That's not a long-term investment. That's not really utilizing specific strategies to uh, drive your portfolio in the direction that you want it to go for whatever goal that you have in place. Now, again, when I mentioned earlier, it's about strategy and it's about what's important to you at this present time. So you may have a strategy because you want to purchase a home in the next year or two. You may have a strategy that is specifically tied towards uh, retirement. You may have a strategy that is more of a day-to-day trader, right? So you need to first find out what's important to you. And as we tie that back into our our topic that we talked about today, in terms of uh, being productive and understanding truly what's important to you and what you know that you do best, I think you'll understand your strategy more and and, and define it uh, and be more successful that way. So if your strategy is about day-to-day and just trying to make money right now, then, you know, you can jump into that AMC stock and you can jump into that GameStop stock. Um, and kind of play around with it because you understand the risk that's involved with it, right? It can jump up like it's doing the last week, you know, $30, $40 a a share, but it can also drop, right? So if that's your strategy, you know the risk. But I really want to recommend things like that if you're looking for long-term retirement strategies, looking for some income uh, moving forward. That's not the strategy you want to go. If you want to take a little bit of money and kind of gamble with it, that's great. Not a problem. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend actually doing that, even though you could potentially see some short-term gains. Don't be fooled. Those short-term gains are not always the best for you because when you see those short-term gains, right, the volatility of it, it can quickly turn around to some big losses for you, right? And that can completely derail your strategy as to what it actually is for. So again, make sure you understand what your strategy is and adjust accordingly. Don't just jump into the hype just because you see it's a frenzy and everything is going on. And maybe some people are making some money right now. If it's part of what you do, do it. If it's not, I wouldn't really recommend the risk. Protect yourself. We're an investment condom, people. Relax. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> just got to gotta, gotta, gotta make sure you <laughs> put it in slow. Relax. Don't, go, don't do too much too early. Just don't do too much. <laughs> might be a little wet at first. right? You, know, you might like it a lot, but don't. Don't fall in don't love. Go, don't don't do it. Yeah, she belonged to the streets. <laughs> yeah, yes, the investments definitely belong to the streets. Don't scratch oh, Bandicoot. It's no, no. <laughs> All right, we getting out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to go left. 
Yeah, just Splash Bandicoot. I ain't heard that in a minute. Yeah, I guess we ain't got no All right, man. That was episode 46 of Junk Position Podcast. Wait, before we leave, I just want to, can we play something sad real quick? No, I'm not playing on sad. We got to go back to you for the for for Zonos and the uh, Serenity Prayer. So I was just trying to derail for a hot second. Okay, I was about to say I thought it was end to end because I really my news then got shot after my Knicks loss. So. Mm. All right, well, oh, fuck it. Here you, hold on, hold on. Here you go. Hey yo, Zonos, this Zonos that so light skin, so stay black. I'm highly upset. I don't even know if this needs to be edited out or not, but I have to go to a non-black wedding on Juneteenth. <laughs> yo, oh, that's yo, wild. yo, I'm hot because I had just finished <laughs> living in like, America. Whole, like, yeah, like my day, my whole. I was planning to do like wear my everything, you know, my shirt. Now I got like, and then my lady's like, "Yo, you forgot the weddings that day." I'm like, "Why would they schedule Juneteenth?" She's like, "They white. They don't care about that." I was like, "Good point." <laughs> She I also was, wanted to say, shit, I don't care about it either. Yeah, word up. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was so tight, yo. I was like, damn. So, anyway, with the sad state. Power, power to the people. Yeah, power. right on. So, you know, I like to, like, start off bad and end on a good note. <sighs> so, unfortunate, my New York Knicks, this is my last day wearing this gear. It's going in the closet until preseason, till October, till around Halloween. <laughs> They lost. That was very that was very inclusive of you, Zo. You putting your your gear in the closet. I like that. Continue. Yeah, yeah. four <laughs> four games to one. We took an L. We exposed that we need a real superstar, and Randall was a uh, kind of like a what you call Greek freak, Luke. like a, just a regular season <laughs> guy. Yeah. You know Yo, I, mean? I seen the tweet. Oh my god, I wish we could put it in here. I seen the tweet and it was like Julius Randle all series and it was like Lil Wayne like I'm not a star. God, Somebody lied. Funny. I was like, yo, that's hilarious. Yo, he like did. I never seen nobody do no cast with a friendly ghost impression. Like he just disappeared. That's like, not his fault, man. Nah, it's your fault, man. bro. You it's beat not. you, son, Kev. If you average thirty something against the team and all of a sudden you can't get over fifteen, like what? What did Space Jam 2 take your mojo? Like, I don't understand. Like, <laughs> I, the I, pressures I'm not, I'm not of productivity. Bro, oh, you pressures. played in Kentucky. These guys played in big-time schools. There was more fans at the college games than there was the pro games for some of them. Like, yeah, Barrett, gotta, Duke versus UNC, you don't think it had more fans than no. the NBA did? Just RJ now? Barrett I'm, not I'm, ready for prime time. No, he's not. I'm just going to say this quickly and real quietly. Julius Randle got double-teamed. <laughs> he's not... That wasn't what he was getting during the season. No one really cared about what he was doing. It's playoffs. Everything is, yeah. you know. But everybody else got to hit their open shots, too, because that's nothing. It was. Alex Burks. <laughs> game and, one. Okay. Then he thought he was out in Houston and left his <laughs> – I don't know what happened. Like, nigga, get out of here. But anyway, enough with my guys. We just going to say it was an all right season. I'm, I'm still – they were better than what we thought. The Lakers took an L last night. We're not talking about that. Yeah, we, we talk, talk about, about you. <laughs> nah, a misery love company, so bring it on. So, oh, my God. Uh, Anthony Street Clothes Davis, as Charles <laughs> Barkley <laughs> like to call him. A we day to day. Yeah, <laughs> word up. So we're going to see what happens with them. They still got a little life left. I'm by the time that they hear this, by the time that they hear this. They might be eliminated. It'll be 3-3. Three, three. No, it'll be 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> yeah. It'll I be three three. Them. Don't get it twisted. Like I root for the like, my niggas not playing. I root for. They don't sound like it. No, no. I mean, they don't. They're not in our division. They're not conference. None of that. So it's like, all right, whatever. But um, they got some stuff to do. Some picking up. Then next, I want to um, tell everybody about a Netflix series. It's, I think it's a four episode series that uh, I was told, and I started watching it, but I kind of dozed off. I actually went and. I paused it because I realized like I gotta haze everybody in my family and tell them all sitting yeah. on the TV and watch it. It's a documentary called High on the Hog. Yeah. A Netflix series about African American cuisine and how we influence the rest of American cuisine as a whole. I will say the first episode is a little slow, so prepare yourself. Four. Yeah, that's what made me doze off, and it was late. So I was like, all right, well, I need to watch this like three in the afternoon. Yeah, like I can't watch this. <laughs> at 11 30 like at night so but i advise everyone to watch that so you can learn about american history which also is black history um and it ain't just in february so 
Yeah. I would advise everybody to watch that. And then uh, we reached a milestone of a terrible incident, but just kind of showing how we can do this again. It was 100 mm-hmm. years since Black Wall Street mm-hmm. was burned down, which is considered the Tulsa Massacre. Um, so they actually had, I think, one or two people that are still alive from that time frame, right? Yep. They're like 100 yep. and some change, right? Yeah, 100, 107 Seven, and 100 like and kids or something like that. Yeah, 105, yeah. Yeah, so they was kids at the time. But, you know, at that point, you remember everything after four years old. So um, they spoke in front of, like, the Senate or Congress oh, or whatever. Yeah. But um, they got some other documentaries that's out right now for the Tulsa uh, riots. Yeah, Westbrook has one. And LeBron has won. Yeah, so I think everyone should take a look and, and um, send that to our Caucasian friends. That's Bring it to the wedding, yo. Yeah, I'm going to definitely <laughs> drop that. I'm going to drop a <laughs> couple of USBs and put in uh, take-home bags or whatever the case may be on the low. Like, oh, what's this? Is this, is this the Friends reunion? Yeah, no. so they put it on. So, um, yeah, we definitely... Oh, um, that's you know that's a milestone. It's not a good thing, but it's a it's something to reflect to maybe open the eyes since everybody's Why the new thing is woke. Stuff on the low. Yeah. Who? <laughs> is this a friends reunion? Shut up. <laughs> I, I, I tried to like let it bounce, but but yeah, yeah. So since everybody claimed they woke now, this is something that they need to watch because it might awaken even more that. Yo, we can actually do something like that again. You know I mean? Yes. I think that's what is needed right now. The issue is that people are doing it, but they're getting called frauds and scammers. So it's, it's like, there's a lot that has to happen. Speaking because... of frauds and scammers, I know there's a little sidebar from the news, but I actually um, submitted my application for my PPP loan to get forgiven because I actually had a payroll. Right, you have employees. employees. Yeah, my shit was legit. So I got scared once AY started getting dimed out, and I was like, oh, shoot, let me submit my joint so I don't right. have no issues. But I'm getting clear. I got my shit got accepted, so we just waiting. Like, we oh, that's it. dope. So, Get that up off you. You yeah, done? So, but that's it with the news, like, it's a sad day for me, and it's going to be a sad Friday for y'all. Anybody in the tri <laughs> well, not the tri-state, just New York. The real tri-state, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Sorry, Philly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, South, that's South Jersey is a part of Philly. No. Yeah, yeah. It's that part Philly of Philly. Sports. I was to say New Jersey. No. All right, man. Keep the balls. We can get on out of here. Well, I'm going to uh, toast to the next good season. We're not just. Wait, wait a minute. I'm going somewhere with it. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. It's like, so, what? wait a minute. I want to ask God to grant us the serenity to accept <laughs> the things that we could not change, like Julius Randle forgetting how to play basketball <laughs> and turning into Randle with no handle and uh, like a thousand turnovers a game and the courage to change the things that we can, like me, I don't know, maybe calling the front office <laughs> and asking for a trade and getting Kawhi Leonard to see a free agent. We can control that. <laughs> And the wisdom to know the difference between the two. So that's what the serenity prayer Amen. is. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> My brother, thank you. My goodness. Let's get on out of here. Is My there goodness. All right, y'all. We'll see you next week. You got to have love. <laughs>